Hey, what's going on YouTube? Marine X back at it again. This is my tour for my everyday carry knives, a few of my watches. What I keep it in, this is not everything. This is just mostly the folding items, some multi-tools. I guess we'll do a, a tour of, of what I actually keep in my Husky toolbox here in a second. So this might give you an idea of how to store your stuff better, why I went with this solution, and if it's something that you wanna proceed with as well. Now, first off, we gotta talk about the actual box that we keep all this stuff in. This is the Home in Hadfield Armada. Full disclosure, Home in Hadfield sent me this specific case. However, they didn't pay me any money. They don't know that this content is dropping today or whenever it drops. Matter of fact, they're gonna see it the first time you see it so they don't get any prior approval for the content. My thoughts are my own and they're not sponsoring this video, but the people that are sponsoring this video, we can bring them up first. We gotta talk about VAR Adventure in their line of premium watches. Now, why do I like VAR Adventure so much? I talk about them a lot. There's other watches here, but I'm a big fan of VAR Adventures and you can basically find the price point that works best for you. The one that I wanna to feature today is the S3 Field Watch. This one has a little calendar on it so you can actually tell what the date is specifically. It is the field white version. Now, the thing about VAR and their watches, this is one of the few companies, one of the very few companies that actually are doing assembly in the United States. The thing I like about the, uh, the S3 field watch is that it does have that fantastic quartz movement. In my opinion, this is one of the best watches you can get below $200. It, it looks, this is a 36 millimeter, which is probably my favorite size to wear. You can get them in 40 millimeters, they make them bigger in 43 millimeters, so forth and so on. But it still has all those small details that we want in mechanical watches. You get two watch bands every time that you buy a VAR Adventure watch. I think they look good whether you're in the ocean or if you're dressed up or if you're in everyday type of wear. I got one on my wrist now, one here, and then it's the preponderance of items that I own. If you're looking to get away from your smartwatch, you're trying to up your game for your actual watches all together, whether it's a field watch, a dive watch, or a chrono type of watch, check out VAR Adventure. They're gonna be able to take care of you. Check the links down below for the best pricing for any available discounts, and they will absolutely take care of you. Shout out to VAR for sponsoring this video. That kind of talks about the very top of the case itself. So the very top of the case, this is the Armada. This is a, we, they call it a knife storage solution, but you can put whatever you want to in these cases, okay? So let's, let's just start off with that. Whatever you see fit, you can put in these cases. At the top, you have nine slots for actual folding knives or, or uh, fixed knives if they fit up here. I've decided to put my watches up here. They, it does have the slots which are designed to actually keep the actual uh, knives up here, but I decided to put some watches up here as well. We'll talk about what the knife is, what I like about it or hate about it, and if I pay for the knife. So we'll kind of keep it moving in that specific way to kind of make this uh, easy. Before I do any of that stuff, let's just look at the measurements of the Armada because this might be something that you might want to check out. And so if you use my link in the description, you'll get 15% off this specific case. But they're having their spring Black Friday or spring sale right now. They're doing 20% off site-wide, which is better than my discount. So if this is something that you're interested in, you might want to check it out sooner than later. So this is coming in about 18 and a half inches wide. It is about 11 and 7, or excuse me, 10 and 7 eighths in width. And then in height, we're going to be rocking with the lid closed. The height is about 10 and 7 eighths as well. So if you're trying to figure out is this a case that can fit in your man cave, your babe cave, your garage, wherever? Those are the general specs. I know it's on the website, but it's a lot different to see someone like sitting next to it in person versus just looking at it on their website. It comes with two different drawers, all sorts of slots in the drawers and all of that good stuff. So first off, let's start here. This is the Wii knife. This is the Nitro. This comes with CPM 20 CV blade steel. And we'll bring you in a little bit so you can check this out. So 20V, uh, CPM 20CV blade steel does have a bolster lock. 
I'm a big fan of this. I didn't pay for this. It was actually given to me by Neve Knives. Shout out to Neves for sending this out to your boy. Uh, very nice knife. It does have my card up on it, a little bit of black titanium. Great built overall, uh, a titanium pocket clip as well. A little flipper tab, so more than one way to open it. This is a pricey boy. If I didn't buy, if, if I wasn't given this knife, would, have I, would I purchase this knife? It comes in about 267 bucks. I think if it was on sale, and it got down near the $200 mark because this is such a nice knife. Like it sounds nice, it feels nice. This might be one of those knives that I would actually spin the nut for around the $200 mark, especially if you just look at the hardware. I don't know if it's brass or if it's just colored stainless steel or whatever, that looks really good. And then the bolster lock and the action on it, it's a really good knife. I'm a big fan of that as well. Now, Next to that, and the very top, this is not really my premium knife section. This is just knives that I kind of like the way they look, like the way they, they're used and stuff like that. Next to that is the Three Rivers Manufacturing. This is the shadow. The show side is this darker color and it's, it's this like CNC machine G10, which is actually freaking wonderful. The other side is this green color. That's why they kind of call it the shadow. This is a CPM 20 CV blade still as well. Made in America, big old chunky knife. I love this knife. If, if, if I were trying to rate companies that were doing their version of the Axis Lock, uh, which is Benchmade's old, uh, now expired patent for their lock, so a crossbar lock, I would say that this company, TRM, in my opinion, does the crossbar lock the best. I've never, I haven't touched tons of them. Comment down below if you think that there's a company that does it better. And I've touched a lot of them. Of course, I own Benchmades, uh, Hold Decker's Able Lock. I've tried Vod Steeds. I've tried Wee Knives, Civivi, a lot of them. But I just, I'm a big fan of how TRM does theirs and the way it works overall. Next to that, we have the Gerber. This is the Gerber Fast Tanto Auto. This is an automatic knife with, uh, the uh, S30V blade still, the Made in America. This is kind of like premium Gerber knives. Some Gerber knives don't necessarily impress me. This knife impressed me so much because I got this knife in 2009 and it is going on two decades old and I have never had any issues with it. The, you know, as long as I've taken it apart and I've taken this to Afghanistan, I've taken this to Kuwait and it's been to Spain, it's been to Belize, it's been to a lot of different countries, it's been to South America. As long as I take it apart and just clean it, I've never had any issues with the actual action of it itself. The blade still, I've had, you know, the only parts I really have to sharpen is the aggressive tanto nature of the blade. I sharpen that part. It sharpens very easily. The serrations can be sharpened as well. I love that it's stainless steel scales. It's just a big old beefy beast of a knife. And this makes me really appreciate what Gerber has the ability to do versus some of the stuff that they're doing nowadays. Uh, so that knife was given to me while I was in the Marines and I was permitted to leave with that knife after I got out the Marine Corps. So this is the TAC cam. This is called their Bulldog. This is a sheet foot OTF knife. This was given to me as well. I listen, I kind of like the action of this knife. I don't like that there's a small delay when you push forward here. I do like the fact that you can't put really push the ramp with your index finger. So that kind of gives me a level of safety that if one of my kids that don't have the thumb strength that I have, it's less likely that they're going to accidentally deploy this. Overall, a decent OTF. Uh, it does have a small little area in the back if you want to run a keychain or a lanyard back there, and it's a reversible pocket clip. Yeah, so I'm not a fan at all the hardware is T6 on this. I would have liked to see some T8. I just, I like the confidence of T8. Um, I like the... So it's weird to me that on the show side, that's where all the hardware is. And on the other side, it's completely naked. <laughs> I would have preferred, like, so if you're a left-hand carry, you're going to switch this pocket clip around and you're not going to see anything over here except for the additional screws for the pocket clip. I, I don't know. I like the way it looks. There's some things about it that could be better. Um, you know, shout out to VAR for sponsoring this as well. This is just where I keep my watches overall. Um, so this is the VAR. This is the S5 Tactical. This is the Solar. I'm a big fan of this watch. I like the fact that it is has a super long standby time. And I don't know, just overall, it does have a quartz movement. This is the G-Shock. I don't remember the model number on this thing, but it's just a G-Shock. I like the fact that it tells me like multiple time zones for time. 
I think it looks pretty good. I think it cost me around $135. Oh, so this VAR watch that I just showed you was given to me by VAR. And I'll let you know which ones were and were not given to me by VAR. Uh, this is the GD100GB watch by G-Shock. So pretty good looking watch. Um, it actually has a pretty good standby time as well. I have had this watch, I think, for four years, and I have not changed the battery once. Just kind of lets you know like how long these watches can go. As mentioned earlier, this is the S3 Field Watch by VAR as well. And if I were spending my own money for a watch sub uh, $200 and I really wanted to get away from a smartwatch, there are very few companies I could think of that I would want to spend my money on on a watch that can go, you know, has a lockdown, screw down crown, meaning that it's even less likely that you can get water in there. They have this fantastic warranty. It goes under 300 feet underwater with no issues whatsoever. So I think that um, I'm a big fan of these overall. The next one here is the VAR. This is the A5. This is discontinued. I bought this with my own money. And this one here is one of their early runs at a watch, a quartz movement watch. I've had this one for like two years. And although I've had updated models, I can still see where they still take their time. They still put in a lot of work. When I got this initially, it was around the $200 mark. And it's still a fantastic watch. They've just done some subtle changes. Um, so like the American assembly is way down there near those indices below the six. They brought that up into the uh, higher up into the watch so that you can more proudly see where it says USA assembly, if that makes sense. And I think that they had some complaints that when the the minute hand was near those indices, you couldn't necessarily see uh, what the minute hand was doing because of the USA assembly wording. So they uh, they did move that. But overall, I still think it's a a great setup overall. Then we have a blank spot for the watch that I'm wearing, which is the VAR. This is the A12 Dirty Dozen. This is a uh, this is not a USA assembled VAR. So they make most of their watches in America. This one is actually made in Switzerland. This has a an automatic movement, a Swiss movement. And this one actually has a see through. So you can see through the back of the case itself. Um, fantastic watch. And so any other watches that I don't have here are sitting on a, on my desk which are in a rotating watch winder, which I think will be the next upgrade when I when I make the decision to go for, um, you know, get more watches or whatever, because I obviously have run out of room here. So if I make the decision. So here's my goal. The reason that I wanted and I reached out to home in Hadfield for them to send me this box and I told them that we uh, I would feature the feature them in my knife tour video. I reached out to them because I really am trying to force myself to have no more than 50 knives overall. And right now that's just pocket knives and I'm trying my best to get to that point. I know that sounds gluttonous. Especially if you're watching this channel and you're just like, man, I'm hoping to get two knives or three knives. And so I don't want to just like have an overabundance of stuff for no particular reason. So we'll jump here into the top drawer. And so looking in here, you can see that it does come with like these slots, which are already in here. I think that if I really wanted to, I could bend them and take them out. Uh, I don't have a need for it. I just kind of leave things in here as I see fit. But just to kind of give you an overall picture of what this looks like and um, kind of how I store stuff. Will I change stuff? You know, maybe so, maybe not. But we'll work our way from over here to that side as well. So we have the Leatherman Wave Plus multi-tool, which is probably something that I could sell or give away or something like that. I really keep this now for comparison sakes because it is pretty clear that my go-to multi-tool is the Leatherman Free P4. There are very few things that this multi-tool does that my Leatherman Free P4 cannot do because I now have a driver on my Free P4. So the only thing that this thing has that my Leatherman does not is the micro driver, which I never use, which you would use to like fix sunglasses or watches or stuff like that. Still a great multi-tool. I wish that you can get to all the tools while it was closed and I wish it included a pocket clip. Those are, you have to buy the pocket clip separate. And you can't get to every instrument uh, implement while the actual tool is closed. That's something that's an issue for me. 
Now, I'm a big fan of the Leatherman Free T4 series. This is still kind of using uh, one-handed technology. It has a tweezers on there. It has a knife. It does have a great pair of scissors. I mostly use this at my laser cutting area and anywhere where I, I want a multi-tool, but I don't need a pair of pliers. This is something I will pull out. I have it in two different colors. Um, this is also something very easy to manipulate or to change out. So Leatherman was using security bits on their Wave series and on a lot of their other multi-tools. And as they progressed on, they started getting away from the security bits. So this one here, I think is using a T8. Yep, so it's using a T8 and you don't need security bits. So it makes it a lot easier for you to do modifications if you wanna change out some of the implements or whatever. This is a some Swiss Army knife. I don't know which one it is. I can tell that it has, what, four layers on it. I think it may have came with a survival kit. This is the type of multi-tool I keep around to slowly but surely give my 15-year-old, my nine-year-old, show them how to use knives and stuff properly. It does include a pair of tweezers and a toothpick. So uh, those are kind of like a dime a dozen. Similar setup here. I think this might actually be the Rambler. This, thing, this only difference here, this is a uh, one, two, three, I think what, four setup, four setup uh, SAK. It does include a Phillips that is implemented into the tool. And that's basically it. These are basically the same. Um, so for me, I like Swiss Army knives, but I really like to buy them specifically for what I need. What I mean by that is here, I have the Huntsman here. I bought this one specifically because it has this fantastic scissors. It does have a corkscrew, which I don't use for untying knots like a lot of people talk about. I use this for opening bottles of wine. So if we're going to a more sophisticated location, if we're going somewhere where it looks weird for me to pull out a big Wampin Leatherman and we may be opening bottles of wine, stuff like that, I'll bring this with me. No issues whatsoever. Or I'll bring the Leatherman juice, which is not in here. I think it's in one of my kits, but uh, which will kind of just not make me look like a, a straight weirdo pulling out a huge item or whatever. The Leatherman Squirt PS4, you guys need to Leatherman, bring back the Leatherman Squirt PS4. Oh, just for disclosure, all the everything I just showed you, I bought with my own money. And I also bought this with my own money. I missed the Leatherman Squirt. I actually almost sold this um, before it discontinued, I almost sold it. And I thought to myself, I'll just pick up another one. Well, it's discontinued and you can't get another one. This has a fantastic file. They have the diamond file on this. It's such a small multi-tool, so capable, feels great in the hands. Bring it back, Leatherman. Bring back the Leatherman squirt. Bring back the Leatherman juice. We are, we're waiting. I've showed this before. This is the uh, the Swiss car by Victorinox. So I had this in a pouch, in my premium pouch. I've stopped using that premium pouch for a while because I'm testing out the wingback sling. And a wingback sling, I do have the Leatherman Free P4. So I don't see the point of having both this and the Free P4 because I think the free P4 can do almost everything that this can do except for the toothpick. And I never really on like a super duper stressful need for a toothpick, but the Swiss card is actually pretty useful. You can travel with it. You can remove the knife and take this on board with you through TSA. So if you need a travel multi-tool, it's something that you might want to look into. I do have a, a little slip by three sons manufacturing. This one specifically is to carry my tactile knife company the bear but in here i have an olight i5r or i5t um, i like it because if you're carrying a, a a knife that doesn't have a pocket clip it's just nice to be able to put this whole thing in your pocket and uh all that good stuff so this is the actual the tactile bear this is a magna cut one of my few magna cut knives i bought this with my own money i like the way this is patina starting to get a lot of patina over time. I took off the lanyard. I'm not a big fan of the lanyard on my knife, so I did take that off. Great walk and talk on this slip joint. This is just a really great knife overall. I need to carry it more often, um, but I like this knife a lot. So shout out to Tactile Knife, and I guess that kind of also goes to the point of what I have in the pocket, which is the Tactile Knife Chupacabra. Uh, for disclosure, they sent this one to me out um, but, I mean, we'll just see how it goes. It's starting to get a little bit more dirty. I, I don't want to, I'm going to take it to my knife maintenance area soon enough and clean it up. I just want to use it and see how do I feel about it. What are some things I don't like about it over use cases and stuff like that. And so we'll, we'll get more into this slowly but surely. 
Next to that is a Leatherman mud. I own three Leatherman muds, all in different variants. I have the all blacked out version. This one here has the uh, carbon scraper, which is great for scraping the, the your weapons and not actually messing up your barrels or anything like that because the metal is completely different from the the steel of your, your weapon or whatever. So you wanna get a bronze scraper or carbon scraper. That's great, built in there. Uh, decent knife with partial serrations a uh, disassembly tool for ar tools full-size leatherman bits the actual longer leatherman bits in here integrated hammer integrated bottle opener pretty decent pocket clip if you just really want a heavy duty leatherman um then this is probably the way to go in my opinion i think that if you're okay with a heavy duty leatherman you're going to use it for not only camping but also disassembling your weapons taking it to the range the Leatherman Mutt is an easy recommendation. If you don't want to spend the money on the Mutt because it is a little pricey, you can get a real Avid multi-tool. Those are great as well. Of course, those don't include pliers, but they include everything you else you need to do maintenance to your, uh, your boomsticks. This is, I think this is the Kubi Vagrant. I can't remember what this one is specifically. Uh, Kubi did send this to me to check it out. And I've been trying it out for a while. This one here has the micarta scales. And I I don't, this has M390 blade still. So I did, I did try this out for a while. I may make a video on it. It does have a liner lock. This one here compared to, I actually had the Autumn version of this exact same knife, but I think comes with a different blade still. I like the Autumn's action better. The action on this one is a little bit, it's a little rough. It's a little rough especially for the fact I carried this thing for like two weeks. I still need to clean it up from when I carried it. But um, it's a very good looking knife. I think the M390 is very good. I like the contrast color of the pocket clip. But I will see if we do a full video on that. Vodsteed also sent, um, speaking of knives that were sent over, Vodsteed sent over the Thunderbird. Multiple ways to open this, front flipper, a flipper in the back, the thumb hole, and it's a button lock. So multiple ways to open this. This one is M390 as well. It's a coated blade. This is the, the scales aren't as fat as I normally would like it for scales to be. Um, but it's a it's a overall pretty aesthetically pleasing knife. Um, so I really want to try this one out more as well just to see if it will be something I give give a go. I like the price point on this. I think it's like $135 and then they have sales all the time. But don't quote me on that. Any of the stuff that I'm talking about here, guys, I'll link up down below. You can check it out if you want to, if any if anything looks interesting to you. This is my, I think, probably one of my only titanium knives that I purchased. I think I have others, but this is the only one that I purchased. I wasn't a big fan of it. I like the blade steel, but I don't like some of the things that's going on with it. This is the v Nice Poseidon. Love the way the titanium scales look on this thing. I love the uh, 154CM blade steel. I need to actually clean this thing up. It's a liner lock and it's over $200. So there's some things about it that I'm not a fan of. The pocket clip's obnoxious. It works well, but it's obnoxious. And uh, it's deep carry. You absolutely can put any fabric you want to in that pocket clip. It's not gonna go anywhere. It's already starting to discolor and I don't carry this knife very often. When I was carrying it heavy, I carried it heavy like probably a month or so straight. And it started to discolor on the thumb stud. The hardware started to discolor. Also, all the hardware is not the same size. The main pivot is a T8, and then all the rest of the hardware is a T6. I'm not a big fan of that. These are first world problems, but I want to be able to just disassemble the stuff pretty quick. Um, so in, for something that's over 200 bucks, I kind of wish I could have got something other than a 154 CM. But, you know, that's kind of beggars can't be choosers, I guess. But it's my first experience with V9s and probably my last. I probably won't buy anything else from them uh ontario rat now the ontario rat one this is the uh aus8 i think this is a decent knife if you can get an ontario rat if they make it an aus10 i would say that because it has a little bit more edge retention or working edge retention but these knives are commonly sub 30 dollars 40 dollars i think they work really good you can wear the pocket clip multiple ways reversible you can carry it tip down like a neck and poop if you wanted to a huge tons of blade um, real estate for you to actually use and cutting a cutting profile that's easy to use i think ontario the rat and the rat 2 are great knives especially uh bang for the buck g10 scales 
I know Ontario was purchased by another company. Hopefully they continue to produce the rat because they're just really, really nice. So this is my Spyderco Para 2. Mine specifically has seen better days, um, but I'm a big fan of it. I like their compression lock. I like the, this one is using the, I can't remember. Oh, this is the CPM S45VN variant. Of course you can get the PM2 all sorts of different ways. So I've actually ran a laser over mine and put a little bit of design into these scales just to kind of give it my own flavor. Under that, under that is the Benchmade Mini Cricket River. I love the way that this looks with the contrasting orange on this. So I'm not a fan that the, the hardware is different. T8 here and T6 is everywhere else, I think. Yep, so T8 on the pivot, T6 is everywhere else. But overall, it's a great knife to take with you hunting. It's not something you want to leave out overnight, um, but it does have the S30V steel on it. It does have the wood scales. You just have to wax those every now and again with some Renaissance wax or whatever. I bought that. I bought the pair too. This is the TRM Nerd. This is using a liner lock versus the uh, crossbar style lock. You can just tell the size difference with the TRM knives. The Nerd is a much smaller knife here, and this is a knife that you might want to carry with you if you're trying to be a California legal or in some state where you have a knife that's a specific size. I think there's only like 2.5 inches or something like that. Uh, TRM did send me this knife. It's a small little baby knife. It's a 20, uh, CPM 20 CV blade steel. I like the finish on it. It could, the action could be a little bit better. I need to work it out a little bit more. I haven't carried this as much as I would like to. But overall, a, you can actually swap out these scales, which is something that I like about the nerd in the atom. The the how quickly you could swap the scales out, which is a good thing. Next to that, we have a Civivi full size Praxis. The mini Praxis I think is a better bang for your buck. Um, this one the Full size Praxis is only rocking a, I think it's like a, what is the blade steel? It's a 8CR, 8MOV blade steel. So you do have to sharpen this a little bit more if you're going to use this thing all of the time. Mine seen better days. Just kind of show you what the coating will look like if you use it a lot. So the price on these are great, but they get beat up pretty quick. They do get beat up pretty quick. Under that is the Benchmade North Fork. I think is what this one is called. I think this one's a little bit more better suited than the Crooked River for hunting because it does have all wood scales. It does have the uh, liners are full of stainless steel. I think there's liners on the, I think there's a backspacer on the Crooked Rivers, but I like the way this looks overall. Um, I like the blade shape better on this. This is, just a, this is a great everyday carry and a great knife for hunting, reversible pocket clip. And I like, um, I also ran a laser through this, kind of put my own design on it. So that's one of those knives by Benchmade where great idea, great concept, great price when I got it. I think I got it for like 130 bucks. So now these are some knives all by Daily Carry Co. I think that the scales are all titanium. This is kind of like they're sliding and they're magnet, they're, they're magnet knives and all that type of stuff. They're gravity knives. So this is the mini gravity knife and it's a cool little knife cool little talking piece i think it's using m390 blade steel and um i mean something interesting to look at i don't know if it's something that i would necessarily carry every day because it doesn't exactly have a safety kind of like some of their competitors does especially the mini one it's just kind of hard to deal with uh let me know if anybody's interested in possibly picking up any of these daily carry codes whether it's the the magnet ones or the the gravity knife the, the full size gravity knife here which is kind of hard to do one-handed let me see if i can so yeah so what it kind of looks like full go just kind of comes out goes in no no issues whatsoever next to that is a full size crooked river by benchmade um i would say i like the full size more than the mini as much as i like the mini i like the full size just a little bit more um they seem to have the same wood on them but the the wood is starting to patina differently on my full size crooked river you can tell that it has been carried way more from the oils from my hands and it's just starting to patina a little different it probably could be oil but i love how big so the crooked river in the full size adamas i think the crooked river has a bigger blade but 
for folding knives, at least when I bought it, I don't know if it's still the same, has the liners and the backspacer and all that good stuff. But for folding knives, when I bought it, the Crooked River was the biggest production knife that Benchmade made with for length of blade. That's great for actually, if you, do want, if you want to start the process of an animal or something like that, having all this blade is pretty freaking awesome. Axis lock is still goaded. Don't get it twisted. As much as we hate the butterfly tax and stuff like that, it's just a great knife. Um, it is pricey. I did pay for that as well. We'll put it right here for now. That brings us to the mini Adamas and also the full size Adamas. Both of them are using the CPM Crew Rare, which are fantastic for outdoor use. I think that the Adamas and mini Adamas are great knives. Benchmade is about to release these knives in an automatic version. Once again, Benchmade, if they sell something and it does well, they just stick with it. And this is selling and it's doing well, so they're sticking with it. So we do have both of these. I would say overall, if you had to choose one, I would probably go with the full size Adamus more than the mini. Because if you're actually going to use it for whopping and hitting on stuff, the full size seems to make a lot more sense if you're going to hit it with a log, if you're going to use it in a silly way or something like that. Now, if we're looking at these blades, yeah, just barely, just barely, the Crooked River is just barely bigger than the uh, full size Adamus. But, oh, man, I don't carry these as much as I should. I definitely should get the, uh, the Crooked River into the pocket more often, especially as stiff as my Axis Lock is on there. I should probably get that into the pocket more often. Great knives. They're just pricey. I did pay for these on my own. A lot of my Benchmade knives that I did purchase, guys, I bought on base. And base, there's tax-free. And also on base, Benchmade can't go above the MSRP. So a lot of these Benchmades I'm buying for way lower than you would buy out in the real world. This is a little pocket watch that I carry that I have for, with the date from my wife and I's wedding anniversary. Uh, it has a nice quartz movement in it and all that good stuff as well. Next drawer is all slots. So the top had that kind of like open space where you might want to put, you see I have multi-tools in there, a watch, maybe you want to put a wallet in there or a passport or something like that. And then this is just all slots, all real estate for you to kind of do exactly what you see what I'm doing here. So we'll go from starting over here. This is the Topps Knives. This is the Mini Scandi Folder. So MSF-G for G10 scales. I have it in green. G10 scales are actually very nicely made. I like the way they look. This is an L Max. I wish, now I would say this, the pricing on this is starting to come down a little bit. I would only buy this knife if it creeps below the $150 mark. I don't like spending more than $150 on a knife that I can only open one way. Obviously with this knife, you can only open it with the flipper. It's probably why I don't carry this often. It is L Max. It would be great for me to take hunting. It is the blade stock. The, the blade profile is huge. Look at all that steel on the actual blade itself. But I like to be able to open my knives more than one way. Uh, Topps Knives did send this out to me. It's a great knife. It does have titanium hardware. So the pocket clip is titanium. It's T, is it T8 all around? Let's see. The pivot T8 and yep. So T8's all around. So you can take this thing apart pretty easily. But for me, I would kind of watch that price. Another uh, more budget knife for hunting purposes and just for everyday carry purposes. This is the Buck 314. This is a USA made Buck. I don't remember the blade steel on this one, though. Um, I would have to look it up. Does it say it on here? It just says 341. No, it, does, it doesn't say the blade steel, but it's still a great Buck to have. It's probably 154, knowing Buck. Comment down below. If you know what the blade steel is on this one, let me know. It has the wood scales on it. It has a very small profile. It has a thumb hole. I've never been able to open it with a thumb hole. It's just awkwardly placed. I've never been able to whip it open. I've always used the flipper. It's kind of a flat bottom at the end for you to actually be able to reverse the pocket clip, which kind of makes sense. So it's uh, friendly to those that are left handed. Feels pretty good in the hand. And I bought this as well. So not a bad price. We got to go with the Benchmade Mini Freak. The Mini Freak is a fantastic knife. The only issue I have with it, it is carbon fiber. I'm getting away from carbon fiber as much as I think it's a great composite material, high-end material. I think that it's uh, the pricing on it is something I'm not a big fan. I like the red thumb studs. I like the way it's reversible pocket clip. 
This one here is rocking the S90V, which is freaking fantastic. I rarely have to sharpen this thing. Mainly just pull it out, oil it, make sure everything is good to go and kind of roll from there. So, um, but yeah, the pricing on that is a pricey boy. I think I bought that for around a $300 mark. This is the Tecco F2 Bravo. This is using D2 blade still that's coated. This is a, a USA made Tecco. So for the pricing is a little iffy. Um, it's like $149 for D2, but you are getting this like marble carbon fiber. If that's something that you like, you're also getting titanium hardware. So you're getting the titanium pocket clip, which kind of gets out of your way. And the hardware itself is T8 on the pivot, T6 is everywhere else. I think it looks pretty good. You only can open it with the flipper. So it's right below my only open mark for $149. I think it's a decent knife, but it, you should probably try to catch it on sale. The Benchmade Bug Out Aluminium. Now, the Benchmade Bug Out Aluminium is probably my favorite Benchmade Bug Out. The, the weight feels right. The blade seal is great. M390 blade seal. It's coated. I love the weight of the thumb stud. The coloring of the knife looks fantastic. It kind of looks like a start, like a sunburst for the coloration of it overall. I own several of the Benchmade's bug outs. This is my favorite, hands down, the aluminum. If I could only have one, I would go with the aluminum version. I did buy that with my own money. Here's Gerber's attempt to come at the Benchmade bug out. This is the Gerber Assert. This is S30V blade steel with a telescoping thumb stud so you can move it up or down as you see fit. G10 scales. Um, it just needs work. The detent's kind of heavy on it. The lanyard hole is obnoxiously big for such a small knife. And it's actually an awkward place as well. Um, I think it fantastic looking scales. I, I got it on sale for like $112. That's probably the only main reason I bought it. It's only like 0 0.01 ounces more in weight than the bug out. So they are definitely coming at the bug out with that knife, which is why they, in my opinion, probably why they came up with it. Speaking of bug out, this is a Benchmade bug out. This is a combo edge, a little bit more rare. A lot of people, when I show this to people, they think it's fake. Though they do sell a combo edge bug out. Um, so combo edge is great for cutting rope if you don't need a clean cut just to have it with you. I wanted to get the OG color for the bug out, but I didn't want to get the one that everyone has. So that's why I did seek out the partial serrations. I rarely carry this. It feels, that's the thing about these grivery handles is what makes the bug out feel so cheap. It, it feels great to use, but it feels very, very cheap. If you're gonna get the Grivery, I would say try to get it in something that makes you feel good, such as one of these two variants. These are the Benchmade bug outs, the mini bug outs. I have it in orange, I have the Stormtrooper, both of them S30V, both of them are great. I think if I had to choose one though, I probably would go with the Stormtrooper version. I got both of these for $99. Once again, buying them on base, um, it makes it viable to buy these in multiple different versions. I think the action on the mini bug outs is significantly better than the action on the full size. I don't know why it just feels better. Um, although the Stormtrooper does get dirty because it is white grivery scales, it is just something that looks really, really good. The orange looks pretty good as well. Um, matching the thumb studs with those, it looks pretty good overall. So over here, this is the CDC Hansen, uh, the Stormtrooper version. So I wanted to track out a CDC knife. They did give this to me at Blade Texas because I was not a fan of all the sprinkling and stuff on the knives. And then they started showing me they can still do that, that, that kind of signature look that they have, but in a more muted way. So I like the Stormtrooper look of this. I like the white of this overall. Um, so the, the, Detent, the action on this was really tough when I got it. It was really hard to open. It's gotten a lot better just using it, but I was unable to open this with a thumb stud without like literally making an indention in my nail when I first got it. But you get two ways to open this. It only costs like 60 bucks. I think it's a pretty good looking knife. All right, so above that, we got to talk about the Benchmade bailout. The Benchmade bailout is what the Benchmade bug out should be. I like the mini bug outs. They feel great. I love the aluminum bug out. And the reason I like the aluminum bug out so much is because I like the bailout, which is made of aluminum scales. This does have M4 blade steel. It does have this aggressive tanto looking blade. Only thing I don't like about it is the glass breaker. It kind of pokes you when you're getting it out of your pocket. But other than that, 
The scales look better. They feel better. It just, I think the action's a lot better on the bailout than the bug out. If you had to spend the money, this costs more than the bug out. I think I got this for on sale for like 189. These are normally over 200 bucks. But if you had a one and done knife, if there was a one, and, I'm gonna tell you when I get all, when I get all the way through this thing, I'm gonna tell you like, if you force me to get rid of all my knives and I had to go to like one or two knives, I'm gonna tell you which ones that will be. But this is a heavy contender for possibly being a one and done knife. Next to that, we got the pair of three by Spider Co. This is using the CTS BD in one blade steel. This is a this is the lightweight edition. I need to get a regular pair of three, um, just because I want to check it out. I did throw a laser over this to kind of give it my own design. Compression lock. I mean, it's a, it's a decent. Uh, has a wire clip on it. The I think that if I compare the pair of three and the pair of two, paramilitary two. I like the chunky boy of the paramilitary two a little bit more, but they're both slicey. They're great for slicing fruit of your kiddos and doing everyday tasks and stuff like that um now for everyday tasks the benchmade mini griptilian is a freaking monster i got this for 89 bucks and it is still using s30v blade steel fantastic scales feels good in the hand you can basically do any task that you want with this you got your hand on a workpiece you need to be able to bust that workpiece down or whatever this thing has great action on it I love the fact that the scales are just really rugged and big, big womp and pocket clip. I like the mini Griptilian. Um, I like the price I got it at. I don't know where it runs nowadays. I think it's like 139 bucks, but that's one of those one and done bench maids that you can get and kind of be satisfied with that overall. Then we take a look at the Spider Co. This is the Spider Co Delica 4. You're not going to be whipping this open like other Spider Co's. This is using VG 10 blade steel, which I think is a Japanese steel. Um, but I do like the fact that it does just look and feel good in the hand. Super slicey. I need to carry this more often. You can even see the last time I used this, I oiled it and put it away and it hasn't seen the light of day in a while. But I like the fact that this has a very confident lock on it because you're not going to be whipping this like normal spider codes. You can actually use this and womp on it with a log or whatever. It's just a lot easier to use. It almost feels like a full tang knife because of the way that they built it. Delica is an easy recommendation, and I like VG, VG uh, blade steel. Now, as much as I say I love the aluminum bug out, you would almost think, well, X, you also own a carbon fiber bug out. Why don't you like that more, especially the fact that this is using S90V blade steel? It's great. Carbon fiber is a composite material, and I still think that the aluminum has better action than the carbon fiber. And I like the way the carbon fiber looks with the little blue pocket clip and the blade is still significantly better, but I don't know, man. I just, I love, if I had to go down to one Benchmade, I would easily and happily go down to the aluminum variant. It's just, it's just something that gets grandpa excited overall, but hey, what do I know? You know, I'm not a knife expert. So this is the Ocasco or Ocaso um, strategy. Uh, this was given to me by Mikey Daily Carry. Shout out to my boy. This is using a K110, K1110 D2 Thai, Taiwanese made knife. This is actually a pretty nice knife. It only has one way to open it, and I think the price point is over $150. Super slicey, great look on this knife, and I'm going to pay this knife forward. I love the fact that when you have this thing open, it almost has like an indention for every single one of your fingers. So this is a great, easy to use everyday carry knife. Mikey Daily Carry, shout out to you for sending this out to me. I'm gonna pay this forward. I'm gonna give this to somebody that I know needs a knife. And I tested this thing out. It is using T8, T8 on the pivot, T6 is everywhere else. I think it's pretty good looking. Pretty good looking knife overall. Now, one of that is, underneath that is probably one of my favorite budget knives. This is the Remit Rhinoceros or the Remit Rhino. This is a button lock. This is using, I think this is using the budget 14C28 8 blade steel. Listen, 14C28 and blade steel. I love that blade steel. I think it's a great budget blade steel. I love the fact it has the front flipper. It has the, the actual the thumb stud. It has the button lock. Multiple ways to open this thing. Great Marcarta. It's not made in America. Marcarta, not made in America or anything. It has liners on it. Like, it's a great beast of a knife, and it starts at, like, 50 bucks. 
or 60 bucks and it oftentimes goes on sale for 40 something bucks so if i uh i know a lot of people recommend civivi the praxis and they recommend the elementum and stuff like that but if you want to just like a fun beefy knife that you can just open in multiple ways and have a good old time with and you're okay with micarta that's probably my easy recommendation above that is a made in america buck this is the buck 112 pro this is using the s30v blade steel micarta scales that are starting to patina very nicely a very very confident lock back and I love the fact that this thing has a very small, pretty good uh, cutting profile. The thumb studs are kind of getting your way whenever you're doing slicing of cardboard. That's one complaint I do have about it. If you're going to be doing a lot of slicing, the actual thumb studs kind of get in your way. But the 112 is a fantastic knife. I love the pocket clip. I love the fact that it kind of has this like symbol in it or has their logo in it rather. And on the show, and the hardware is like the only thing that kind of confuses me about this knife is to take it apart i don't see the exposed hardware when it's time for me to finally take this thing apart i'm gonna have to get on youtube because all the hardware is like muted i don't know if these are push pins or what so I'm not gonna admit i have no clue how to take this apart i have yet to have to take it apart to clean it or anything like that but when that day comes it'll be youtube university next to that we do have the Wii. this is the banter now the Wii banter is using s35en we did send me this knife and I like this. I think that the price point is a little high. You're getting G10 scales. It's a liner lock. I, I don't even, I think this specific color and variant is discontinued. When it was in stock, I think it was like $135. I mean, it's kind of pricey to not have, I don't know. I feel like you're really playing for the steel. It, it sounds really great. It has a great sound to it when you actually launch it. It has a great profile, just a small, nice little Knife, you can get the smaller version by Civivi, the baby banter, if you want to save a little bit of money. I don't know what that blade still is. I just know it costs less. Then we have, oh, I forget the name of this company. They sent me this knife. It's like a switchblade style, but it actually, you kind of pull here to open it up. I don't like the actual profile of the knife. The, the, the shape of it is like this weird looking tanto, but I love the way you open this thing. It's a D2 blade. It's coated. It's coated, but it's also like a stone washed finish. So like you pull right here and that's how you open it and it just whips itself open. So very unique looking knife. Um, but other than that, there's not a lot to say about it. I think the price point's a little too high for D2. You're really paying for the fact that it opens up with that switch type item. And I mean, very mediocre, everything else. The pocket clip seems very blase. The G10 scales have great manufacturing to them they look really good the c they cnc machine obviously but that's about it i don't think whatever the pricing was on this i can't remember the name of the company let me grab it this is the templar knife that's what it's called templar knife company they sent this to me so i don't even remember what model this is um so my thoughts on it are i think if they can get the price down because i think this was well over a hundred and don't even quote me on that but it's a great knife, little knife to for talking point, try to see if somebody can open it up or whatever, whatever the case may be. So this is just a tour of my folding knives that are on me. There's some knives that are probably in pouches somewhere or, you know, sitting around. I have budget knives that I use to practice sharpening. Like I have knives, the Ozark Trail knives from Walmart. I use those to practice sharpening and, and uh, Smith, Smith and Wesson knives that I have. But these knives are primarily for practicing sharpening giving away to people beater knives so they don't make it into this case so um this is a buck usa made and this is the 28 284 plus um i mean if you want a usa made buck it's really cheap it's not super expensive but there's nothing super special about this knife i think the scales might even be made polymer they feel like plastic but they're probably polymer uh blade scales no pocket clip hard to open um this is a kershaw rj martin tactical this is actually a pretty nice kershaw this is a made in china kershaw and as much as i like this knife i do use this knife as a beater or to practice sharpening this is hcr 13 mov blade steel so this is a knife i can recommend sometimes if you're on a really tight budget and you can get it at a good price and then you got the ozark i have several of these ozark trail knives from walmart which I use to practice on sharpening 
where I use them for beaters or just use them for comparison if I'm comparing another knife. But that's about it. So we'll do a tour of my fixed blades and any other no-name knives at a later date. But comment down below, what is your favorite knife for here? One that you're thinking about picking up. So we mentioned earlier, X, if you were forced to go down to one knife, one knife only, which one would it be? Super hard decision to make. But if I were going at this exact point and I had to make a decision, I probably would go with something that's USA made. So that takes the wheat knife out of the mark. And something that I think I could fix myself if I had to, something with a good warranty, something like that. So it would probably be either the Three Rivers Manufacturing Shadow, which is a, oh, oh my God, it's just a, this is a great knife. It's a great knife. Or we would probably go with the Benchmade Bailout. Those would probably be one of the two I would force myself to go with. It's, I mean, a lot of great options in these, these drawers, a lot of great options that I have. Of course, I got the tactile in my pocket right now. But if we're just talking about something with a great warranty, with a, you know, I'm, as much as I like tactile, they, they, they started making knives in 2020. I think their first knife wasn't actually in production until 2021. So I want something that has a little bit more longevity. TRM doesn't have that long a life either, but TRM, their parent company has been provi providing titanium for knife companies for a very long time, which you guys probably didn't even know that. So they've been in the knife game for a very long time. They just decided to start making their own knives. So when you have a company that's been providing titanium for these other knife makers for a very long time, and then they get into the game and start producing stuff like this, it's a banger. And the bailout is just, it's just so, I don't, I don't know why I can't, you know, I've tried the narrows. I've tried the, I've tried all of them. I just like these two the most. Comment down below, man. Let me know that I make a great decision or not. If this is your first time stopping by, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you part of the battalion. If this is not your first time stopping by, then hey, thank you once again for stopping by, watching me run my grape. For everyone else, we'll speak soon.